Hello, I'm Atuba George and I'm so blessed to be bringing God's truth to you today. Praise God. Hey, God have great things in store for you today. I want to ask you this question. Have you, I shared something with you yesterday. Have you began to pray at night? Did you pray last night? If you did, you've signed up for the blessing from Zion and it's surely going to come to you. Now you have you have much legality now to make demand for your daily bread. How about that? Praise God. Join me right now with faith in your heart. Say, Father, I demand right now for my daily bread. Yes, I receive all of it because it's coming right now in Jesus' name. Amen. Hey. Man, praise God. Yes, the Lord is blessing you out of Zion. The Lord is blessing you from Zion. Turn your Bibles with me to our text in Ephesians chapter 2. Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 10. It says, For we are his workmanship. Hmm. Created in Christ Jesus for good works, not for bad works, for good works. We are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. Hmm. And these two scriptures... This one lets it us know that there is a work God prepared beforehand for us to walk in. And then Genesis chapter 1 and verse 26, when God said, let us make man in our image and after our likeness. The work he prepared ahead of time for us to do. I know, you know, sometimes we think, oh, the work God has called me. No, sometimes, oh God, I want to do the work of the ministry. And all you can think about is going, holding crusades, holding seminars, holding programs, teaching people, seeing the crowd, watch people fall under the anointing, see people healed. That we, we mostly think that that is the work God has called us to do. See, every believer has been called to be a witness. Now, when he says we shall be witnesses to him i want you to understand something the witnessing is not going around telling people about jesus no sir no it's not going knocking from door to door hey i've come to preach jesus to you now every believer have been called to do that but that doesn't mean you're witnessing for Jesus. Witnessing for Jesus means living a life that when someone looks at you and looks at the things Jesus said, they will believe him. Now you need to take this seriously, I'm sharing with you. Witnessing for Jesus means, uh, it, it means, in, in, in a way it says, I was a witness. Because someone have said something. And people are like, how, how true can that be? And the one stands and said, I was there. I was a witness. And sometimes you want to go, oh, someone hurts somebody. You say, how, how could you accuse me of doing that? I didn't hurt anybody. And someone comes out and said, see this mark over here. You gave me this mark on that day. Have you forgotten my face? Now, who's that person? That person is standing as a witness with a sign. You see that now? That scar is a sign that he's a credible witness. So the witness is not to go and be telling people the story. The witness is confirming the story that has been told that it is true. The story has already been told. The world have heard it that Jesus is Lord. What the world haven't seen yet are witnesses that Jesus is indeed Lord. 
And how will the world see that Jesus is Lord? Sometimes we think is when we do miracles. Now, if you've been here for so long, you will know that miracles only hold people's hearts for a while. It doesn't keep them forever. Yeah. If you've been in ministry, you will know that there are people that have experienced great miracles under you, yet they still turn around to do you harm and do you evil. And you wonder, is this not this one that was crippled when I met him? Is this not this one that was financially down? We prayed together and God opened doors for him. He's the same one that is using his money now to fight him. Yeah, there are many people in situations like that. What do you think happened? See, human beings will always be human beings. And that's why you must not bank your mind on the wrong things. Signs, wonders, and miracles, they are excellent. They are wonderful things. But I'll tell you the truth. That doesn't mean, as a person, you're being a witness to Jesus. Because there are people who do signs and, and wonders that, that don't belong to Jesus. Jesus himself said it. He said, on that day many will come and say, we did these things in your name. And then I'll say to them, depart from me, you workers of iniquity, for I never. Notice, he didn't say, eh, you, were, you were doing all those things, but later on in your life you backslid it. No, he says, I never. That statement is very powerful. I never knew you. I never. Would Jesus be telling a lie? When he says, I never knew, it means he never knew you. It means, oh, plus the works you were doing, oh, plus your individuality, oh, your identity, oh, they are not on all in his record. So how come, you, how come they were doing many works in his name? It's very simple. I, I shared some things with you last week. It's not every sign that is done by the Lord. Now, there are signs that the Lord orchestrates and does, okay? Now, there are signs that happen in the name of the Lord, but the Lord did not do them. Yeah. And then there are signs that are perpetrated by sorcery or demonic forces. See, three of these things. The ones done by the Lord, the one he orchestrated and he does. The ones that are done in his name, even if he doesn't know it. See, and then the ones that demons do. Yes, there are, I mean, there are, there are people who, who tell you straight on, I don't believe in God. Me, I believe in my, um, I believe in the, the, the evil spirits in my place. When I call them now, they will come. And the person will do signs before you. You remember Moses in Egypt, he threw the rod on the ground in the name of the Lord. The Egyptians threw their own rods on the ground in the name of their gods. And the same effect took place. The rods became serpents. See that now? So Moses did a sign. Every sign Moses did in Egypt, those guys were doing. What do you think is going on? Now those ones were not signs done in the name of the Lord. See? But then there are signs done in the name of the Lord that even the Lord is not, he, is, he didn't do them. He didn't do them. Thank you, Holy Spirit. You know, sometimes understanding these things will help you. It will help cleanse your mind. Because sometimes I see a lot of believers don't even... You know, the, the, the major challenge we have in, 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 in the body of Christ among God's children is simply identity issues. A lot of us don't know who we are. So you see, a believer, someone who's just 50 years old, and you ask him, how many churches have you been to? He said, I've been to like five churches. Why? Ah, uh, when I got born again, I got born again when I was 24, you know, in, in church A and Z. And after a while, ah, I just felt that that place, I've outgrown the place. So I went to church Z and F. Ah, that one, the pastor offended me. Ah, the pastor did something. I said, I cannot handle this again. Then I went to church YZ. 
and in church why is it was one i love that church too, but kai one deacon ah no 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 what that guy did to me i will never forgive him if i've left it to god over kai i can't cite that person and that's why i now went to you know church j and k you hear people talk like that and they think the church is the problem what they don't realize is they themselves have a crisis that they are dealing with. Now, I'm not saying this to tell you, look, uh, that, that I should not live, or even if I feel like, if you're in the wrong place. So the first question you should ask yourself is, how did you get into the wrong place in the first place? <laughs> Praise God. How did you get into the wrong place in the first place? See, it means from day one. Now, now also, there is the guidance of the Spirit of God. Now, one could have attended five churches and they are okay, they are right by the leading of the Spirit of God. So when I begin to talk like this, understand the, the premise, you know, from, um, from the, the standpoint from which I'm speaking. I'm speaking from that standpoint. I got offended in all these churches and then I left. But then one can be sent. Oh, go to this place and then the Lord said, look, you're done with this environment. I want to send you far away. To another environment yes there are people like that see so they will tell you oh why did you leave why well, come you've been to five churches say oh I was in church a and then the, the, the Lord spoke to me and said look you need to go to Susan so place and I went there I had this work with them and and God really prospered the work and blessed the work and then after three years God spoke to me again I said we should go yeah you know you understand what I'm talking about yes that's that's very possible but when you begin to live out of one but so you now label all of them bad as you're leaving them you're labeling them bad it's not the church that have a problem you have the problem i'm i'm being sincere with you right now so it's an identity thing and, and then you find a lot of believers who are trying to conform to the image of their churches see when you when you try to be the person your church standard have created in our church this is who we are this is how we are and you don't see jesus sitting on that seat where he's enthroned trust me you'll become a monster because the identity that you're trying to become is not god's See, someone had this idea in his mind and said, this is how Christians should be. This is how Christianity should look. There is no group that will perfectly encapsulate the, the idea of, of what we are supposed to look like. No group. None. The only person that will reflect exactly what we should look like is the Lord Jesus himself. And how do we know the Lord Jesus? The Holy Ghost. So what every church is supposed to do to you is to make you see Jesus. Not see the pastor. The pastor can never be the standard. No pastor is qualified to be the standard of Christ. None. I'm not saying they don't measure up. No, I said, no, they are not qualified to be the standard of Christ. They are supposed to tell you, hey, move on to Christ as I'm moving on to him. So any system that blocks you from Christ is a faulty system. Any system that equates their pastor, you, you find that a lot. You, you, you even hear people say, ah, our pastor is assistant Holy Ghost. He is so anointed. Hey, uh -uh, he doesn't qualify. Because you have, why I say he doesn't qualify? I'm not using that to put him down. I'm saying you have as much access to Christ like he does. So how do you look at him more highly than he ought to be or that you ought to look at him? Good, he's taught you the word fine and good. But hey, you, you know, even the scripture says Jesus himself never, Jesus didn't put himself there. 
He, he said to the disciples in John chapter 16, he says, On that day you shall ask in my name. And I'm not going to say that I ask the Father for you. Why? He said, for the Father himself loves you. What's he saying? Go to the Father. Jesus is telling you, go to the Father. But, uh, but I thought he said, no one can come to the Father except by me. He said, the mindset you have, you, you have this mindset because Jesus said, no one can come to the Father except through me. So, okay, so, so if I meet Jesus, Jesus will not take me by the hand and say, let me take you to the Father. Jesus was saying, I am the image of the Father. See? So, if you are having fellowship with the Father, you have a clue of what you will look like. That's what Jesus was talking. He wasn't saying, Jesus, come and take us to the Father. Already he had answered that question when Philip asked him, show us the Father and we'll be fine. He says, have I been so long with you, Philip, and you still don't know the Father? He said, he that have seen me have seen the Father. Now, when Jesus made that statement, he was making that statement because the Father had glorified him. Number one. Number two, he, he was, let me use words here now. The word of God made flesh. Now, I, I, I talked to you about that before. That is the only part of the God that is visible. The word of God. Because that's the only part of the, the Godhead that, that shows up and we can interact, we can touch. You can never see the Holy Spirit. You can never see the Father. So Jesus was saying, anyone who will see the Father, that person will look like me. So in John chapter 17, Jesus prayed that prayer. He says, that they may be one as we are one. See? See the prayer Jesus prayed. He said, you give them to me that I should give eternal life to as many as you have given me. And he said, this is eternal life that they might know thee, the only true God. John chapter 17 verse 3. And Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. So if your knowledge of the, if you think you're getting to know the Father and you are not knowing Jesus, I bet you it's not the Father you're knowing. You're being introduced to something else. Every knowledge of the Father you will be exposed to will confirm the personality of Jesus. Every knowledge, every entrance, every vision, every spiritual journey you're going to do that brings you knowledge of the Father will confirm everything Jesus said and stood for. Yeah? I'll give you an example. Thank you, Lord Jesus. You might be arguing over something. Maybe someone stole from you, okay? And you're now fighting to get your money back. You're you're, 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 you've caught the person. And, oh, you, got, you have to pay me my money. You pay me. I'll take you to the police. You, know, you take the person to the police, get the person locked up. And you're doing all that. And, and this guy stole money from me. You know how much. You know. And then you hear a voice saying to you, yes, you did right. All these criminals have to be dealt with. You hear a voice telling you that. And then you say, I tell you the truth, that's not the voice of God. That's not the voice of God. It's not, I, can, I can tell you that. It's not the voice of God. Reject it immediately. What the voice of God sound like? I'll tell you. Maybe it was quiet all this while. You've gotten your think you've started getting your pound of flesh, you know, and then you get this guy locked up and you go back home. Say, finally, yes. Oh, this guy, the way he will pay me my money. Eh? Ah, ah, he will sell everything he has. And then you go back home and oh, father, 
thank you, oh Lord. Thank you for helping me arrest this guy. He was running away, Lord, but by your strength, we found him and we've arrested him. Thank you, Lord. And then you hear that voice say to you, are you okay now? And hey, Lord, but um, I need to get my money back. That's the main thing. It's not just arresting him. And the Lord said, would you let him go? If you would trust me and let him go, I'll give him much more than that money. Oh, yeah, that's the voice of God. Oh, Pastor, why would the voice of God make us look weak? No, it doesn't make you look weak. Jesus said, give to everyone that asks of you. And anyone who takes away your goods, don't ask him back. But Jesus made that statement. So now you're having dealings with humans, okay? And then you, you get to that point, you hear that voice say, freedom let him go why why see it's confirming what jesus thought and said are you getting what i'm sharing with you now so any voice that doesn't confirm the teachings of jesus or any voice that doesn't put you in line with the personality of jesus is not the voice of god and my time is up. Praise God. Praise God. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Oh, we give you praise today. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name. Amen. I'll see you tomorrow. God bless you.